Today we freeze dry four new things that you wanted to see. What will happen to Mentos and what will happen when you put freeze dried Mentos in Diet Coke? Hey everyone, before starting the video we wanted to let you know that for the first time ever we've got sweats and hoodies for sale in the shop. However, they will only be available for two weeks, so go ahead and click the link in the description to order yours today. <laughs> guys, we're back with more freeze drying experiments that you guys wanted to see. So, here's what we've got going. Four things with a couple of varieties of two of them. Here's the basic idea. You guys have requested more things in a freeze dryer, so we're going to try them and see what it does. We've got Mentos, popcorn kernels, some popsicles, and some eggnog. We have Mentos. You wanted to see what happened to those. I think the idea is that the inside of Mentos mints is kind of similar to Skittles, so we want to see if they will puff up and get crunchy the same way Skittles do. We've got popcorn, and we're going to put some raw kernels in and then try and pop them afterward. And we're going to take some microwave popcorn, pop it, and put some popped kernels in the freeze dryer to see what they do. We've got popsicles of two varieties. We've got some fruit popsicles and some fudge popsicles, and people requested eggnog. It's coming up to a holiday season right now, Thanksgiving and Christmas, and whatever else eggnog is great for. So we've got some eggnog. We're gonna try freeze drying all of these things and see what happens to them. With the Mentos, whatever happens to them, afterward, we're going to try putting it in Diet Coke. We're not freeze drying the Diet Coke. We're just going to freeze dry the Mentos and then put it in Diet Coke and see if the reaction has changed from regular Mentos. And then I think we can just take some unpopped popcorn kernels, give a decent amount. If something goes weird and these pop in a vacuum, a very, very cold vacuum, it's gonna get exciting. This is for our eggnog and I'm using foil instead of a cup because I want to make sure that it's in really good contact with our plate. I think we've had a couple small issues with using cups in the past, but it doesn't heat up the right way. All right, there's a little eggnog boat. This is my favorite brand of eggnog. It's delicious. It tastes like someone made eggnog flavored ice cream and then melted it and then you're drinking it. All right, there we go. This is also my favorite brand of popsicles. And yes, I say that as an adult, I have a favorite brand of popsicles and it's this, Pace Bars. And they're just like, they have a lot more flavor, I feel, than normal popsicles. And I'm also going to throw on a couple of fudgesicles. First ingredient is non-fat milk. So I do think there's a good chance that these are gonna turn out sort of like the freeze-dried astronaut ice cream. All right, our freeze drying stuff is complete and I've actually brought part of the inside of the freeze dryer out with us because our popsicles expanded so much, most of the popsicle is stuck to the inside of the machine. It expanded up and stuck to the ceiling of the shelf above it. Since we're already talking about popsicles, let's start by looking at the popsicles. This has clearly exploded. So we have our before and after. Before, frozen, juicy. Popsicle. After we have fantastic popsicle flavor, perhaps even more concentrated. It's not cold. It's not juicy. Well, I mean, in the way that Starburst are juicy, makes you salivate. This is unbelievably light and fluffy. And I think it has to do with the high sugar content. The sugar dissolved into the, the liquid does a really good job of forming these sort of membranes that the expanded stuff is made out of. So this, this has expanded more than almost anything else we've put in the freeze dryer. All right, fudge school. This also is super lightweight slides all the way off the stick. So now we just have a fudge school not attached to a stick. I'm not sure if it's still fudge school at this point cracks open and we have a very similar texture to several other things we freeze dried like nougat and ice cream. Let's give it a try. Again, same texture, uh, sort of like a lightweight chalky, high crunch texture. It's really similar to marshmallows and Lucky Charms, but bigger. Flavor is pretty similar and as you chew it, it kind of leaves like a film on your teeth. It's not really pleasant, but 
you could get used to it if you enjoyed them. That would be interesting as like a prop because this looks really similar. It looks like it's just really cold and has sort of frozen over on the outside a little bit, but really it's not cold at all. This is completely room temperature feeling. It's probably very insulative in fact, so it's not going to let you feel a temperature very well, but it's never gonna melt. This will just stay like this pretty much forever. All right, next up we've got eggnog. Obviously there's a lot of bubbles in it. Formed a fairly solid sheet which, let's see if I can pull the foil off of it even. Oh yeah. Sheet of freeze-dried eggnog. Pretty light, crispy texture. It broke fairly easily. It tastes exactly like eggnog. The taste hasn't changed much. To me, the texture is a lot like a cheese chip, or if you just take cheddar cheese and you cook it until it fries into something that resembles a chip. Sometimes people on like a keto diet will make and eat those. And it's very similar texture to that. It's got some good crunch, a little bit of texture, but of course it doesn't taste anything like cheese. It tastes like eggnog. All right, and on tray number two, we've got popcorn. First off, we have the popped popcorn. It was popped before it went in. It's just microwave popcorn. We wanted to see if the texture changed at all. So I'm just gonna try eating some. I'm not just sitting here eating popcorn. I'm actually trying to tell, is anything different I gotta say, I think it's just popcorn. If you gave me this and said, what's different about it? I would say, I don't know, nothing. It's just popcorn. All right, next up, we have our unpopped popcorn kernels. These have now been freeze dried and the freeze dryer gets down to really cold, like 60 or 70 degrees Fahrenheit below zero. I don't know if it's able to get the moisture out of these hard little kernels. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take these and we're gonna try and pop them. We're just gonna put them on a stove with a little bit of oil and see if they pop like normal kernels or if something else is strange and weird about them. Our freeze-dried popcorn kernels have now popped and I've put them back on this pan and I gotta say, it just seems like popcorn. I mean, I burned it a little bit, but that's not really the popcorn's fault. That's just me. Pretty same texture, same flavor. Didn't seem like it took any more or less time to pop. The result is about the same. I think popcorn is mostly just immune to freeze drying. Mentos. I was hoping that because Mentos have a similar texture on the inside to Skittles, that they would puff up and get hard and crunchy the way Skittles do. They haven't puffed up. We've gotten some cracking along some of the surfaces, but no puffing. As for whether they're crunchy, I mean, that one's not. It's just a Mentos with a slightly cracked surface. Seems really, really similar. However, the most important test with Mentos, of course, is how does it react to Diet Coke? So we're gonna take our freeze-dried Mentos outside along with a pack of unfreeze-dried Mentos and see if it changes how it reacts to Coca-Cola. All right. Starting off as a control, we have a regular unfreeze dried Mentos. They still have emojis on them. Three, two, one. All right. Foams up, rubs out of the bottle a little bit, makes good mess. And now a freeze dried Mentos. Three, two, one. I don't know, that actually looks like it might be a bit more energetic. So, our regular one, I think went a little bit slower, but is still going. Our freeze dried one, I think went faster, but we don't have foam still reaching up to the neck of the bottle. Okay, we're gonna try again, but I'm gonna drop two Mentos at a time. Okay, we got a little bit of an actual fountain there, and it continues to keep going a little bit after the main reaction has finished. Well, that settled back down. I think that was a little bit taller of a column. It's not much. It's like 10% more reactive, perhaps. All right, so I have two more bottles of Diet Coke, and I'm not sure how accurate I'm gonna be with dropping, but I'm gonna try and do four at once of each of them. All right, I'm gonna try and do four at once, see how my Mentos dropping skills are. That's some reaction. To me, that looked about the same as the two Mentos that were freeze dried. Ready?
All right. I do think there was a difference, but I do think it was very small. On each test, I felt like it was about 10% more power out of the freeze-dried ones than the non-freeze-dried ones. So not a lot, but if you're doing some experiment where you really need the maximum reaction, then it might be worth freeze-drying them if you happen to have access to a freeze-dryer. One, two, and four Mentos. Nice. Guys, that's not all you know. We've always got more for you to see. Hit that box up at the top to check out our most recent video, and we will see you in the next one. Talk to you then.